New York City is not the place you think of when you think about buying super cheap rental property, is it? No, no, no. New York is very expensive. But guess what, New Yorkers? I'm here to help you guys get super cheap rental properties. I'm talking the cheapest rental properties in the United States of America. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and I am here for you, investors like you, right? That's what I do here on Holton Wise TV. I help everyday people invest in real estate. You don't got to be a millionaire to invest in real estate. When I started investing in real estate, I was 21 years old managing a friggin' Radio Shack, right? You remember what happened to Radio Shack? They went into bankruptcy, and I think like Ty Lopez owns them now. Weird. Anyway, that's what we're not talking about. We're not talking about Radio Shack. We're talking about New Yorkers trying to start a rental property portfolio with a small budget, right? My client, Kim, regular person, regular gal, just like you, just like me. I mean, I'm not a regular gal. I have a gigantic beard, but you get what I'm saying. I'm a regular guy, regular gal. Anyway, let's get, not worry about semantics here. All right, here's the deal. Kim isn't a multimillionaire as I'm sure a lot of you aren't multimillionaires. So she's like, James, help me get a low-cost rental property. I'm in New York City. We got rent control. We got prices through the roof. What do I do? Hooks up with me, my team. We find investors from expensive markets and all throughout the world, really, low-cost rental properties that my team manages. Right? I've sold over $200 million worth of this stuff, and we run the largest rental portfolio of its kind in our market. We're focused on Northeast Ohio today, and the property I have for you, Kim, is the cheapest duplex in a C-grade city. That's Real Estate 101, Kim. Buy the lowest property in the neighborhood. Let's take a look at the area, the market, the numbers, the whole shebang. Because I looked at this actually a little ways ago, right? I looked at this property already for a different investor. Uh, they ended up going another uh, direction, but that's okay, right? Because uh, every pot has its lid, right? Not every deal is going to be right for everybody, but that's what I want to do. I want to pre present you guys with the information, and then from there you do what you want with it, right? So, Kim, I'm going to go to a quick break, then we're going to go to that footage, and then you tell me if you're ready to put in a bid on this property. And if not, let me know what you don't like about it, and me and you, Kim, we're going to switch gears. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. This this is the good part of the show. The meat and potatoes, okay? 6.30 East Avaliria, five days on the market, and I believe we're getting a big discount here. $78,900. Now, anybody who's uh, paying attention to my show or understanding what's going on with the Cleveland market knows if you're buying duplexes in decent C-ish grade neighborhoods, you're paying about a hundred grand. This one already deeply discounted at 78.9, and I think we could go a little bit further and get it for about 75. The question, why? Why do we have the ability to pick something that should normally be 100, pick it up for 75? Why? Well, a couple reasons. Number one, when people look at the Cleveland market from all over the world because people are hearing things, they're seeing national publications, articles, this or that, they're hearing that Cleveland's the best cash flow market. Cleveland's the best cash flow market. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. All they do is say Cleveland. They forget to mention all the other areas in the greater Cleveland area, the other cities, and investors right from all over the world. They just narrow in on stuff that has a Cleveland address. This doesn't have a Cleveland address. This has an Elyria address, right? Elyria, whoop, getting tied up on the cord here. Elyria is about a half hour west of Cleveland, right? 
People heard about LeBron James, right? You know, you've heard of LeBron James. I would imagine if you're a living, breathing human being, you know who LeBron James is, right? Everybody knows LeBron James is from Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. LeBron James ain't from Cleveland, people. No, he's not. LeBron James is actually from a city called Akron. It's about 30 minutes south of Cleveland, right? Southeast, all right? So this is the same distance from the city of Cleveland as LeBron's hometown, but everybody just refers to everything as Cleveland, right? That's great. Because that means all the investors from Nationwide are focusing in on the Cleveland properties, and I believe that artificially inflates their price a little bit. And then deals like this one fall through the cracks because nobody's paying attention, right? It's in the Cleveland market. My team, we handle it, $200 million in sales. We have tons of properties over here, right? To us, it's all the same, right? To the locals, it's all the same, right? To out-of-state folks, they don't ever pay attention to that. You never hear of Illyria. There ain't no... National publications, no articles on any investment website you're on where they're like, Elyria is a great place to invest. Nobody's ever said the name Elyria. It's a teeny little suburb, right? Cleveland, the Cleveland market folks, multiple millions of people, right? I think it's three or f three to four million people, I believe, is in our metro area. Only like 340,000 of them actually live in the city of Cleveland. Think about that, right? In addition, I actually like the government in Elyria better than the government in Cleveland. Now, that's one reason why the price is so low. Second reason it's falling through the cracks here is, well, the, <laughs> the listing agent, God bless his soul, hasn't done anything. Okay, as far as pictures go, we got one picture, nothing else. What did he have to say about the property? Not a damn thing, a completely blank listing. Didn't say what the rents were, didn't write not one word about the property. Literally did next to nothing bare minimum effort this is not the appropriate way to market a property but that's okay i dug deep found out some info for you guys the tenants are paying 500 bucks a month in rent now you have no insight into what's going on at this property you have no idea what it looks like you have no idea what the conditions is uh and you don't know what the rents are unless you're talking to me and i've just told you they're 500 right so you have no clue what's going on well guess what here's the skivvy here's what you really need to know here's the information you're going to have that everybody else doesn't have 500 that's below market rent month to month tenants below market your market rates for these units are 650 and 750 we got a one one a two one should be bringing in market 168 of that 168 i believe after fixed and variable expense estimates you'll be netting approximately 78 78 i believe we can get it at 75 because nobody's paying attention to Elyria. number one number two <laughs> marketing there's like nothing for anyone to work off of right uh so because of that, i think we can get it at 75 that means you pick this up only 18,750 out of your pocket bank kicks in the rest and that folks would be a 27 percent cash on cash return if you can get those current tenants up to market rate We'd want to do so by slowly increasing the rents. We wouldn't want a turnover to occur because I'm going to tell you some more information that's not in the listing. And you know what? This is information that you're going to get when you've sold $200 million worth of real estate. Here's the deal. This is not something you should anticipate. The units are brand spanking new. Now, long term, month to month, below market rate tenants. When those tenants move out, you're not just sweeping and then putting in new tenants at market rate. No, you're doing a full turnover, right? You're probably looking at like between five and 15 grand, depending on what's going on, right? Uh, walls, carpet, probably new kitchen, new bath uh, fixtures, okay? It's probably what's going to happen. That's what you need to anticipate. So we don't want to just jack their rent up and have them move out because we don't want to spend that money. No. Instead, we go up slowly, 25, 25, 25, and get them up to market rent without ever creating a turnover, never paying for that turnover, right? Turnovers are what kill your returns, guys. Not getting 1000 bucks a month for a $75,000 property. It cash flows right now, okay? So everything we get is going to be cherry, right? You want to get more rent without incurring a turnover. And as far as your big ticket items, roof, hot water tank, furnace, do not expect any of them to be brand new because they are not. Now, back to my chart. As you see, I have a little something here, $840 a year for capital expenditures, okay? That's money you're saving. You actually get that money right now, okay? That's your money. But I'm not allowing you to consider that return. Right. It I don't hold it. It goes to you so you can spend it on freaking hookers and cocaine if you want. But what you need to understand is that's fairy dust <laughs> different than the dust you're shoving up your nostrils. Uh, you're not actually making that money because you have some big bills that are going to be coming up. 
A roof is about $7,000. Roofs last about 30 years. This property don't got a new roof. When we get it inspected by the third-party home inspector, I'm sure it's going to say it's got, you know, the last five years or so of its life cycle, right? Ten, five to ten. It's going to be in the back end. Furnaces cost about three grand. We're going to be in the back end of those. They last 30 years. How water tanks, they cost a grand. We're going to be on the back end of those, right? So they last, uh, cost, cost about a grand to replace, last about 15 years. We're going to be the back end of all three of those things. That's why I want you saving 840 a year and preparing for when those bills eventually come because they will. But hey, guess what? We're picking this thing up at 75K and a property basically in the exact same condition, properly marketed with a Cleveland address. We get you a very similar tenant base, very similar rent rates, be in the same or similar condition and it costs you about 100,000. So this deal is a screamer, but ain't nobody but you knows it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.